In this video, we'll demonstrate how to add a DPSK network and manage DPSK passphrases in the Ruckus One network management platform. A DPSK type network offers wireless services in a venue and manages client access by requiring every client to authenticate by entering a passphrase. But unlike a passphrase PSK SAE network, Ruckus One can automatically generate DPSK passphrases of configurable complexity. Additionally, DPSK passphrases can be configured for use by one or multiple devices. Unlike a traditional passphrase PSK SAE network, if a single passphrase is compromised or a user leaves the organization, the security of the entire DPSK network is not compromised. Instead, that one passphrase can be revoked or even deleted completely without disrupting access for other users. On the Ruckus One dashboard, click the Add button and select Wi-Fi Network from the drop-down list. That takes you to the Create New Network Wizard, where the intuitive GUI steps you through each phase of network creation. Enter a network name and select the dynamic pre-shared key, DPSK, network type, then click Next. Included here on the DPSK settings screen is the security protocol setting, defaulted to the recommended WPA2 setting as it's more secure than the first generation WPA standard. Although defaulted to use the DPSK service, you can instead choose to use a RADIUS server for passphrase management and authentication. If selecting the DPSK service option, then you must also select a specific DPSK service. If you've not yet defined a DPSK service in your Ruckus One account, or you need to define a new one, simply click Add DPSK Service, and an Add DPSK Service pop-up lets you define the service without leaving the network creation wizard. So let's define a new DPSK service. We'll give the service a name and define the parameters for the system-generated passphrases. Passphrase format defaults to most secured, which may include letters, numbers, and symbols. But you can also select from keyboard friendly, which uses only letters and numbers, and numbers only. Passphrase length defaults to 18 characters, but can be changed to any value from 8 to 63, inclusive. Passphrase expiration defaults to never expires, but again, you can change this to expire on a specific date or after a defined number of hours, days, weeks, months, or years. Next, you can define how many devices are allowed per passphrase. The default setting is unlimited, but you can change this to limit passphrase usage to just one device all the way up to 50 devices. Lastly, there's an adaptive policy field. While not required, an adaptive policy further controls user and device connectivity to the network based upon specific conditions being met. If not already defined, this can be added later via network control, policies and profiles, adaptive policy. Clicking finish closes the pop-up and takes you back to the create new network screen where you'll see the newly defined DPSK service selected and its passphrase parameters displayed. If you choose to use a RADIUS server instead, notice that the connection process graphic changes and the services you need to configure change as well. You must select a RADIUS server to perform user authentication. This requires adding a AAA server profile in which you'll have to provide the IP address and shared secret for the server. The listening port is pre-filled. Proxy service is enabled by default, allowing the Ruckus One controller to act as a proxy, meaning that when APs send authentication and accounting messages to the controller, the controller forwards these messages to the AAA server. If you disable proxy service, then Ruckus One operates in non-proxy mode. That is, the APs send authentication and accounting messages directly to the local AAA RADIUS server, and no control traffic reaches the cloud. 
the graphic depicts your selection, providing a quick visual confirmation. The optional accounting service, when enabled, and the radio server is defined, records log on, log off, and usage information of the authenticated user on the selected radius server. Clicking Show More Settings expands to reveal the advanced network settings. The VLAN, Services, and Radio settings are detailed in the Advanced Settings for Wi-Fi Networks video, so we'll not discuss them here. The default settings allow you to get your network up and running quickly, and of course, you can change any of these settings at any time based on the needs of your network, even after the network's been activated. For now, we'll leave the default settings. Note that if you selected the Radius Server Authentication option, then advanced settings for Radius options are also included, with default recommended settings already configured. The NAS ID defines the ID sent to the Radius Server, which will identify the access point. The delimiter simply defines the formatting of the information being sent. NAS Request Timeout defines the duration after which an expected radius response message is considered to have failed, allowed values being 2 to 20 seconds. NAS max number of retries defines the maximum number of failed connection attempts after which the controller will fail over to the backup radius server, allowed values being 2 to 10 retries. NAS Reconnect Primary defines the time interval after which the controller will recheck if the primary radius server is available when the controller has failed over to the backup radius server, allowed values being 1 to 300 minutes. Called Station ID defines the format for the called station ID, which is sent to the radius server as an attribute and can be used in policy decisions. Lastly, Single Session ID Accounting, when enabled, allows the access points to maintain one accounting session, including accounting session ID and statistics, for a client roaming between APs. If this feature is not enabled, then when a client roams between APs, the accounting session ID is regenerated and statistics are also reset, essentially resetting the accounting. Moving on to the Venues screen, select one or more venues where you want this network activated. Just remember that you do need at least one operational AP at the venue for the network to actually function. You could either click the Activated Toggle switch on a venue row, or select the checkbox for a venue and click the Activate Taskbar option. Notice that when activated on a venue, the APs, radios, and scheduling fields automatically default to all APs, all radios, and 24-7, always on, availability. Again, you can change any of these settings, either here now by clicking on the setting, or at a later time, even after the network has been activated. The summary screen gives you a snapshot of the primary settings and the selected venue. This gives you an opportunity to go back and change any settings prior to clicking Finish. When you finish network creation, a green success pop-up will appear for a moment and your new network appears in the network list. Note that this network is now active in the selected venues and can be accessed only by entering the passphrase. With your DPSK network up and running, you may be wondering about passphrase management. Navigating through Network Control, My Services, select the DPSK tile. Here, you'll see a list of all the DPSK services that you've defined, including their configurations. You can add a new DPSK service, or you can manage an existing service. Clicking a service's tick box allows you to delete or edit the selected service. Clicking directly on a service takes you to an overview screen. Again, showing the service configuration details, but also showing the networks to which the service is applied. The Passphrases tab is where you can manage passphrases for this specific DPSK service. Here you can use the Add Passphrases function to add 1 to 5,000 passphrases. Note that if you're adding only one, then you have the option of creating the passphrase yourself or allowing the system to generate the passphrase. 
The import from file option allows you to manually define one or more passphrases in a CSV file. Simply download the template CSV file, modify it locally, then upload it back into the system. The Export to File option exports all of the current passphrase information seen on screen to a local CSV file. You can even add a new DPSK network directly from here. Clicking the tick box for a specific passphrase entry allows you to edit the passphrase, such as setting a new maximum number of devices that can use this passphrase or changing the passphrase itself, either manually or allowing the system to generate the new passphrase. You can manage the devices, that is, delete any of the devices associated with a passphrase. And you can revoke, unrevoke, and delete the credential. Note that deletion and revocation require confirmation so that those actions cannot be performed by an accidental mouse click. That brings us to the end of this video on adding a DPSK network and managing DPSK passphrases in the Ruckus One network management platform.